In this video, you'll get a quick overview of the micronutrients test. I'll explain the vibrant advantage in the technology used, then I'll walk through each section of the test highlighting key features. I'll also suggest complementary tests and end by summarizing the key takeaways and where to go for additional information. The micronutrient panel is a blood test that provides a comprehensive assessment of an individual's extracellular and intracellular levels of 48 vitamins, minerals, cofactors, amino acids, metabolites, antioxidants, and essential fatty acids. These are nutrients found in food and are essential for human health. The micronutrient panel identifies functional insufficiency, deficiency, overload, or toxicity of extracellular and intracellular micronutrient levels and helps identify impaired micronutrient absorption, cellular transport, or uptake, which can increase the risk of chronic disease. Why is this test important? Well, more than 2 billion people suffer from micronutrient deficiency worldwide. Micronutrients play a vital role in energy production, hemoglobin synthesis, maintenance of bone health, adequate immune function, and protection of the body against oxidative stress and cellular damage. Assessing intra- and extracellular nutrient levels is the only way to objectively determine root causes of malnutrition and inflammation. Specifically, it can help differentiate between dietary, genetic, and other factors that impair nutrient metabolism or absorption. Uncovering micronutrient deficiencies is an easy and critical step in addressing chronic conditions and healing. Vibrance Micronutrient Test uses multiple methodologies, including the gold standard ICPMS for metals minerals and liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry methodology, LCMSMS, for quantitative detection of most intracellular and extracellular CR micronutrient markers. These methodologies are powerful analytical techniques that combine the separating power of ICP and LC with the highly sensitive and selective mass analysis capability of triple quadrupole mass spectrometry. Before we dive into the actual report, I want to remind you that you get to choose how much information to include in the report you download for yourself or the report you share with your patients. You have three options, summary, summary with interpretation, and full report. I'll be going over the report that includes all three options combined as it is the most comprehensive. Let's start with a quick overview. The micronutrient sample report includes a cover page, introduction, summary, and then lists all 48 micronutrients. The cover page lists the sample type and the results interpretation key. The introduction pages include the methodology and interpretation of report, and I highly recommend reading this page, especially the part where it says, quote, reference ranges have been established using a cohort of 1,000 apparently healthy individuals. The classification of red indicates a result that is outside the reference range, and the classification of green denotes a result that is within the reference range. The summary, which includes the micronutrients that are outside the reference range, along with six risk scores informed by those out-of-range nutrients. Then the full report, which lists levels of all 48 micronutrients along with the blood cell counts. Starting at the top, let's talk about the micronutrient risk scores. These risk scores classify micronutrients by blood system or structure function, scoring each on a scale of 0 to 100. Scores of 86 or above are colored by green and indicate optimal risk. Scores between 40 and 85 are orangey yellow and indicate moderate risk. And scores of less than 40 are highlighted in red and indicate high risk of experiencing issues and symptoms in that health area due to the micronutrient deficiency or toxicity. In this example, low serum vitamin K2 lowered the bone, joint, and muscle health risk score from 100 to 78, indicating moderate risk for health issues in this category. While we're on this page, I want to point out that the red cells indicate intracellular status and the blue water droplets indicate serum levels. Please note that the risk scores assign a different weightage to each micronutrient based on its clinical importance and significance in the body system or structure function for each category. So micronutrients are not scored or weighted evenly. For example, EPA has a much higher impact on cardiovascular health than vitamin E, and zinc has less impact on bone, joint, and muscle health than vitamins D and K2. Moving on to blood cell count. The micronutrient test measures and reports total white blood cell count, neutrophil count, and lymphocyte count, so you may critically interpret results. 
Normal white blood cell counts are needed to ensure accurate results as intracellular results are calculated and expressed as a ratio of total white blood cell counts. For example, and let's assume for a minute that all white blood cells have the same number of nutrients, if you have a large number of white blood cells, your sample will inevitably have more nutrients than if you have a smaller number of white blood cells. However, if your patient's white blood cell counts are out of range, either too high or too low, not all is lost. Low white blood cell counts may falsely concentrate these aniline's, resulting in false highs. For example, 2 divided by 10 is 20%. On the other hand, high white blood cell counts may falsely dilute the aniline's, resulting in false lows. For example, 2 divided by 100 is only 2%. So you can simply shift the values left or right on the graph based on very high or very low white blood cell counts. Moving on to the actual nutrient levels. The results are reported as both a number and plotted graphically, so you can visually see how high or low your patient's micronutrient levels are. Results in green indicate micronutrient levels within the reference range. For example, this patient's levels of arachidonic acid, DHA, DPA, EPA, LA, total omega-3, and total omega-6 are all within the reference range. Results in red correspond to levels outside the reference range. For example, this patient has an elevated AA to EPA ratio. An orange or yellow result indicates suboptimal levels. For example, this patient has a suboptimal omega-3 index. Note, all the fatty acids are based on intracellular levels, indicated by both the word cellular as well as a single row per nutrient. Scrolling down to the amino acid sections, we see that asparagine has two values. One reflects the serum level, and the other reflects the intracellular level. If we keep scrolling, you can get insight on both serum and intracellular levels of most minerals, metabolites, antioxidants, and vitamins. Note the date of service is critical to interpretation. The date of service for this test is August 16, 2023. Serum indicates the past few hours, days, maybe up to one week micronutrient status, so August 10th through 16th. The white blood cell reflects the past three to four weeks of micronutrient status, so July 16th through August 16th whereas red blood cells reflect the past three to four months of micronutrient status, so looking back all the way to May, so May 16th through August 16th. Check out the markers list to learn if the cellular levels are white blood cell or red blood cell. Factors that can affect nutrient status include a change in diet or exercise regimen, initiation, discontinuation, or change in dose of medications, initiation, discontinuation, or change in dose of supplements, or experiencing a major life event, trauma, or change in stress level. For example, I had a client with normal serum levels of vitamins and minerals, but low levels of intracellular nutrients. After doing a thorough health and diet history, I learned that he's a tax accountant who collected his blood sample one month after the end of tax season. He told me, quote, I basically don't eat for the months of March and April. It was no surprise that his cellular levels were low. It was due to accidental malnutrition. Thinking about factors impacting nutrient levels, fasting is not required for the micronutrient panel. However, extracellular amino acids may reflect dietary protein or amino acids consumed eight hours prior to collecting a blood sample. Intracellular amino acids are not impacted by fasting status, and it's at the ordering provider's clinical discretion whether to recommend fasting before the micronutrient test. There are no medication restrictions. However, acute and or chronic infection may alter total white blood cell count, which may alter white blood cell micronutrient test results. And there also are no dietary supplement restrictions. However, ordering providers may decide at their clinical discretion whether to test their patients under a supplemented or non-supplemented condition. Basically, if you want to know what a patient's baseline status is, you'd likely test in an unsupplemented condition. But if you want to know how they're impacted by that supplement, you would test in a supplemented condition to see how that supplement is impacting their levels. If you want to learn more about the nutrient levels that are outside of the reference range, simply scroll back to the report summary to read the interpretive comment, which includes physiological function, how it gets depleted, clinical manifestations of depletion, food sources, and supplement options. You can take an even deeper dive by checking out the micronutrient interpretive guide in your provider portal. In general, conditions, signs, and risks associated with micronutrient deficiencies include fatigue, stress, lack of concentration or brain fog, 
depression or anxiety, numbness or tingling in the extremities, a weakened immune response, stubborn weight gain or unexplained weight loss, skin problems, and digestive orders with malabsorption, including celiac disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Therefore, tests that pair well with the micronutrient panel include the gut sumer to test for microbiome, inflammation, and digestion-related influences on micronutrient status. The wheat sumer to assess for increased intestinal permeability, aka leaky gut, celiac disease, and gluten and wheat sensitivity, all of which can impact nutrient status via malabsorption. Also, food sensitivities, which may be a sign of leaky gut and poor digestion, as well as a total toxic burden, including mycotoxins, environmental toxins, and heavy metals. This is because toxins increase utilization of many nutrients as antioxidants are upregulated to clean up the toxic mess. In a catch-22 situation, poor nutrient status also increases intestinal permeability and impairs detoxification pathways, which then increase the total toxic burden. In conclusion, the Vibrant Micronutrient Test measures 48 vitamins, minerals, cofactors, amino acids, metabolites, antioxidants, and essential fatty acids, helping you to uncover the root of your patient's symptoms so you can create personalized treatment plans to resolve their nutrient deficiencies, address chronic conditions, and improve their lifestyle. To learn more, visit the link in the video description, and if you can't find it, you can use the QR code or URL on this page to visit us. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a vibrant day.